Hey, what is going on, you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape, and welcome to Ending in Zero, episode number four, Cave Bosses Edition. So you guys know how this series works. We're going to be killing multiple monsters in this video and ending our kill count in zero. So we are starting at Calvarion. Initial kill count, 1,003, and we are going to be working our way up towards 1,100. I never did get the Skull of Vedion or the Void Waker Blade from this boss, so I would say say that's the goal for these 100 kills if I'm lucky enough to get them and also I'll be trying to anti-PK as much as possible in this video at the wilderness bosses. Before we get started into this exciting grind though we do have some words from our incredible sponsor today Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome. Top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. 90% of the product come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the U.S. Just one example of this is Terra. The knife in the Terra box is made by Bare Bones, based in Salt Lake City. Every month, Bespoke introduces their members to cool new products, such as outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more. Even live oysters. It's all based on a preference quiz that you fill out when you're on the website. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside Side, but cost you only a fraction of the value. You can also preview your box before it's shipped. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside. To decide if you like it, want to keep it, or swap it for a different box, or just skip the month entirely for no charge at all. You only pay for what you want. So here's a box that I recently received about two months ago, and this box is labeled Explore. Came with a lot of cool stuff, featuring the no Nomad Packable Backpack. This backpack is awesome. Uh, not only is it lightweight and durable, but it's also waterproof, so you can pretty much take it anywhere. Then we have the M8 bottle. Mine came in black, which is my favorite color, and it's also stainless steel, so it's very easy to clean, and it fits in a cup holder. Then we have the Survival LED Headlamp. Four different light modes, high, low, red LED, and red strobe. And it comes with an adjustable elastic head strap as well as three AAA batteries, so it's great for exploring all of the uh, golf courses that I live next to at nighttime. You can light up everything. And lastly, in this box, we have a toasted coconut plus vanilla bean bar, crunchy almonds, and flaky toasted coconut with hints of vanilla and a sprinkling of sea salt. It is delicious. Definitely got a snack on that while gaming. So to get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter Mr. No Sleep 20 at checkout, or you can just simply go to bespokepost.com slash Mr. No Sleep 20. And a big thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. And here we are back at Calvarion with our very first drop of the video, this being a skeleton champion scroll from a doggy. So I'll definitely take that. I already have one in the bank, so it's a duplicate, but nevertheless, it is a drop. Uh, shortly after this, I did run into a guy who was trying to kill me. Uh, he came in with a Void Waker spec and luckily he failed, so I, I did tank that pretty well. And I just continued on with Calvarion. Again, we are looking for any rare drop and uh, we are nearing 1100 at kill count, so that'll be a nice stopping point. Then we'll probably move on to another uh, Wilderness Demi boss. I did, unfortunately, get crashed by a bot, but I just killed him because, you know, it's Calvarion. Pretty easy and safe place to skull and get out of there quickly, but I didn't really get too much loot. Following that, a nice 60 grimy Renard drop uh, from Calvarion, and to my surprise, I got another skeleton champion scroll from the dogs, and then right after that, I didn't even get a chance to pick it up yet, and this guy tried to kill me, unfortunately, but he did say that he enjoyed the videos, so I, I guess there's that, but you know, he, you know, he tried to kill me, so I don't appreciate that, but anyway, we uh, do move on to yet again another PKer trying his luck against me, but he did teleport out relatively quickly. Of all the wilderness bosses, Calvarion is definitely the one that I feel uh, the best odds are in my favor, you know, it's not as dangerous as Arteo, and same with Spindle with the whole web mechanic. So I did luckily kill a PKer, and we're going to go ahead and open up this loot key to see a nice 1.5 mil, so I will take it. 
No deaths yet. But now it is time to wrap up the Calvarion kill count. Gonna take a break at 1100. I definitely see myself returning to this boss one day just because the drop table is amazing. The anti PKing is really easy. And I've still yet to get the Void Waker blade piece as well as the Skull of Edeon. So. Yeah, I have to return eventually. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and update the high scores. And there we see the 1100 Calvarion. Now it's time for RTO. I'm sure you guys remember RTO. This was my most recent video about 12 days ago doing loot from 1000. And I apologize that it took 12 days to upload this. If you want to know the truth, this video has been ready for the last six days. But due to some reasons I had to stall the upload so I do apologize sometimes it's just out of my hands now we did get an elite clue scroll casket early on so I did do that quickly and I banked it so we'll be opening up all of them at the end of the video when we get to the price check now as I was entering the RTO cave I did run into a PKer and I was just gonna let them damage me for a little bit and then I was gonna plan my strike as you can see not only do we have the void waker but we also have dragon claws so a little bit of overkill and as you guys can imagine if they're praying smart they virtually have no chance of surviving these two special attacks. So Jarsip96 uh, was taken down and we go ahead and open up this loot key to see a nice 500k. It's not the biggest PK, but I will take it. And here we go. 1100 RTO has been completed. Uh, I did get a long bone. I did receive an elite clue and another nice PK. But other than that, no rares yet have been seen in this video. Going to go ahead and update the high scores and that'll look a uh, very nice clean 11 to match up with Calvarion. As you can see, I'm only 400 Callisto kill count, so I really got to get that up in the future. Too bad it's impossible to kill, though. All right, moving on to Spindle. We're going to go ahead and kill exactly 100 of these because this was actually one of the few bosses that I actually had a 1,000 kill count exactly at, so uh, I really didn't even have to mess with it, but I wanted it to match with the other Wilderness bosses. I really love killing Spindle. It's just so easy, especially compared to Vendanatus, but all of a sudden, a maxed mage showed up and interrupted my PVMing. Not too sure what pet that is. I think it's the gargoyle one. But anyway, we were just ranging each other. I did have two special attacks, but I was tanking on bruise, so I had to be a little bit careful. Whenever I'm in a situation like this, I'm always going to stay in the room with Spindle because odds are I'll have better chances of killing this guy when there's a big spider helping me out versus just outside the cave soloing him, you know? And my plan actually worked. I timed the special attack at the perfect tick and Spindle did the remaining remaining damage and as you can see I was panicking so hard I almost died by spindle and the web that web is the worst thing ever made so I actually did escape and I opened up that loot key to an astounding 30.3 mil and that's why I love anti PKing. you never know what can happen and you never know what you're gonna get but yeah after that amazing 30 mil I did get a dragon pickaxe on my very first kill back the spindle following that another PKer that tried to kill me but he gave up so I just kept on uh with the inventory and yeah the dragon pickaxe drop was a nice 1.6 mil it has gone down just astoundingly since these wilderness bosses were released but uh i guess that's okay it stayed at like 7 mil for a long time other than that i did receive some grimy snapdragons which is about 500k and of course another elite clue scroll right towards the end with about 11 kills left to go so i did that elite clue and we put the casket in the bank and we'll be again uh, saving all of them towards the end and after about two and a half hours uh spindle was completed so there's our to calvarion and spindle all at 1100 kc exactly i'm sure that i'll get 2000 kc in each of them uh one day soon it's actually one of the best money makers in the game to be killing these bosses especially our to because the void waker piece is like double the price of the other void waker pieces for some strange reason but anyway after updating the high scores and seeing the clean 1100 i figured i would go do a boss that's not a cave boss but it is a snake and that's none other than Zolra. The reason being is because I only had to kill it like 16 times so I figure I'll come back to it in a future ending in zero video and kill it another 100 times or maybe even more to get closer to 8000 KC but either way I did receive one drop and that being another elite clue scroll so you know what's going to happen with that and after all of that uh, you know probably less than an hour I did receive 7300 KC 
see. So that's a decent amount of Zora kills. Um, you know, they date back so long, so a lot of the collection log is missing, unfortunately. But one day, I do plan on finishing it up. And there you have the updated high score KC. So now I need some Mossy keys. I never kill Bryophyta on this account, just on my Iron Man. He's got a clean 100 Obor, 100 Bryophyta. So now it's up to my main account to hopefully match that kill count one day. But nevertheless, I need to get ranked for that Moss Giant boss. So I'm going to be in the wilderness here where the drop rate is uh, reduced to half of what it originally is. Other places in RuneScape to get that key. So we're going to try to obtain as many Mossy keys as I can uh, while we're using a cannon and a web weaver bow. And I did not expect to run into a PKer at the entrance uh, near the Revenant cave, but I guess it kind of makes sense because I guess uh, a lot of them do teleport up there. Yeah, the fight didn't last too long, but the Void Waker definitely pulled through, especially considering I was wearing a uh, chompy bird hat. I did not expect to kill that guy, but I guess he just didn't expect any anti PKing from me. Go ahead and open up that loot chest to a 13 mil PK. I guess that guy was only using a ballista for special attack, and yeah, what a weird inventory. I mean, I don't know what he was doing, but nevertheless, I will take another 13 mil to the price check. Back to obtaining as many mossy keys as I can, and I gotta be honest, I was getting very lucky with this. I think I got over 20 keys in less than a thousand kills here, so I got a lot of RNG when it comes to uh, obtaining these mossy keys, and I really didn't mind doing this. I mean, I think it took less than an hour, and you always have that availability to run into a PKer who's uh, teleporting directly to the Rev Cave, so anti-PKing is there. The cannon speeds this up so quickly, uh, as well as the Web Weaver bow, so I can definitely see myself getting 100 Bryo Fida KC. I hate that boss name, because I always mess it up. I either call it Bryo or Byro, but anyway, uh, here we are actually killing the boss. This is a pretty major, uh, majorly known free-to-play boss for the most part. It does have that essence drop that I think is close to 5 mil right now, but it's 1 in 100, and if you guys recall, in my Iron Man's video loot from 100 of this boss, I did receive 3 of them, so I got incredibly lucky on that account, and that staff is still uh, being used to this day. But on the main, I just, I really didn't feel lucky at all while uh, killing this thing, so I just wanted to get a clean 20 KC so that it would show up on the high scores, and slowly but surely, I want to build that up to 100, and maybe one day 1,000, but I, I don't know, that's a long, uh, long time away. But uh, compared to Obor and getting Hill Giant keys versus getting Moss Giant keys, I definitely prefer Moss Giants, but either way, we did kill a clean 20 Byro Fida, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty nice on the high scores. Definitely going to be doing Obor uh, pretty soon here. Before we venture on into Obor's cave, though, I do need one piece of the Dark Totem in order to complete the full thing, and then we're going to be killing Scotiso once because I'm 49 KC, and I really want to get that ending in zero. So it took about 20 minutes at the Jellies. I was just barraging them, and I did get that Dark Totem top, and now we're going to go kill Scotizo one time and get 50 kill counts. So it'll be a while before we get 10 totems and make that six but I'll definitely take 50 for now. Nothing crazy as it goes for the loot. Uh, we'll definitely get that clue scroll completed, but as you can see there on the high scores, it is looking pretty good. Didn't know I was ranked 42,000 in Scotizo. Wow, I'm really slacking there. But after completing the hard clue and banking the casket, I did make my way over to 50 Wilderness with a cannon, and this time an Ursine Chain Mace, and I was going to be getting about 20 Giant Keys to match my 20 Byro Fida with 20 Obor KC. Another boss that I really just haven't ventured uh, on to on this account. I kind of do certain things on my Iron Man account and certain things on my main account, but now I'm starting to uh, do both on both accounts, so it's kind of a new experience, but I did run into one very strange guy who tried to ballista me to death and didn't even really come close. I ended up chasing him a long time. This was like a three minute long fight, and I finally killed him. Probably wasn't even worth the time or effort, but I did receive 275k. So yeah, even in a location like this, as remote as it is, you never know who you're going to run into. Had some pretty good RNG with the giant keys. It's very similar to Moss Giants. Uh, the cannon is just as effective, but uh, I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit slower than obtaining Mossy keys. Either way, though, after about 90 minutes, I did have my 20 keys, and I was going to go kill my 20 Obors. So we're going to be unlocking some easy and medium combat tasks here, which is always good. And really, there's no highlights to this uh, as it goes for the drops. I think the best thing you can get here is 
the club, which I did receive on my Iron Man when it did loot from 100. But uh, yeah, it took like 10,000, 15,000 hill giants for that to happen. Those were killed in the catacombs of Karend, and luckily on the main account, I killed them in the wilderness, so that saved me so much time. Uh, but yeah, I really did enjoy Obor. It's a pretty quick boss to kill, and uh, you know, drops a lot of rune items, some big bones, a little bit of runes, things like that. And overall, I killed him 20 times, so now we're going to go ahead and update the highest scores, and we're going to see a nice, clean 20 Obor. Definitely need about 80 more uh, in both of those bosses for that to look, uh, you know, decent. All right, on to another cave, and this one is going to be Zolcano, starting at 1218 and ending at 1300. Still missing the crystal seed from the collection log, as well as the small Kano pet. I saw a crystal tool seed actually very early on here by someone. I was just doing this in the normal worlds, and it was very fast. Uh, pretty good money. I think it averages out to like 800k an hour, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But yeah, Zolcano is very fast. Uh, I look forward to doing it uh, long term whenever I do Song of the Elves on my Iron Man account. That and pickpocketing is one of the two things that I really want to get into on that account soon. So it was nice to refresh my memory on how to do Zolcano and all that. And just in general on this series, it's nice to do so many different activities and kill so many different monsters and runescapes. So it's nice to visit uh, some places that I haven't seen in quite a while. As you can see, the loot just continues to stack up uh, well over 150 crystal shards at this point and tons of ore as well as bars and gems and a decent amount of onyx bolt tips. Didn't see a rare or anything crazy in 1300 KC total, but we did go ahead and update the high scores and we see that 1290, which was originally 1218, turn into 1300. So that was pretty nice. Got that taken care of uh, somewhat quickly. Took a few hours. I was using World 375, but uh, if you are in the USA, I do recommend 378. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Dagoneth Kings. As you can see, as I entered the cave here, didn't really go too well. Died right away, but that's okay. You know, practice makes perfect. Did get an elite clue scroll very early on, and uh, to my surprise, Crystal works excellent here. So it was my first time using my crystal setup with the range and I did receive a berserker ring uh, in the very first inventory so that was awesome. Berserker ring is about 3 mil right now so I will take that and went up a little bit and yeah Dagoneth Kings are a little tricky because you have to end every boss with a zero which means that I'm going to be eventually killing just one of them or just two of them and I can't kill the other one because I don't want to mess up the KC. So I think I went with uh, Dagoneth Supreme to be the last Dagoneth that I end in zero and first one was going to be Prime, then Rex. So killing Prime, I wanted to reach about 4,400. So that was about 100 kills total, maybe a little bit less. Seer's Ring actually skyrocketed to 900k. So it would be nice if I can get a Seer's Ring drop. But luckily, no Warrior Ring yet. Uh, still no Archer Ring, though, which is a decent amount of money. So hopefully I'll see some of those. But I did get a couple Seer Coals and Archer Helms. There's another Berserker Ring. That is awesome. A lot of Mud Battle Staves. Those are all like 1 in 128. Same odds as the rings, I think. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it could be anything here. Your luck just, you know, you kill a lot of these things, you'll eventually have lucky inventories and unlucky inventories, but still happy about that Berserker ring, and all these uh, bones are noted anyway. So it should be pretty good price check. Looking forward to seeing all of that add up at the end of the video. But overall, I did finish Dagoneth Prime at 4,400 KC. Following that, I did finish Dagoneth Rex at 4,600 KC, and then I died again. But now I need to reach uh, 4,600 Supreme KC. So that'll be exactly the same as the Rex. And then we're 200 kills uh, below that on Prime. I would imagine a lot of people are in that situation where they have more KC on Supreme and Rex versus Prime. And I imagine that's just mainly because you teleport out after killing Rex or Supreme. And then you don't really want to kill Prime or you don't have enough supplies to. So dozens of Slayer tasks here probably resulted in Prime being killed less. But overall, it doesn't matter because because we did end all of them in zero, so they aren't equal, but they're close enough, and it definitely looks nice on the high scores. Still missing two pets, so I mean, I'm bound to be back at Dagoneth Kings eventually. I think I only have the prime pet, I want to say. I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know where he's at, but yeah, so that's not bad. I definitely got a decent amount of rings and a decent amount of profit from that. Dagoneth KC is looking really clean on those high scores, and just looking at that high scores page makes me want to do so much more. Like, I see 1800 Sarah, and I instantly just want to kill 200, and ah, god, I gotta do so much. Well, now we move on to another cave boss. You guys probably know this fella. He goes by the name of Jad, and uh, yeah, I mean, I almost died once during this, but other than that, it went pretty smooth 
smoothly. I was at 175 KC. I just wanted to get to 180. I'll probably be doing five JADs every episode whenever I release the next one in this series, and eventually I'll get to a nice 200 KC. And I'm always losing fire capes in the wilderness because I, I don't protect them and I, I really just don't care. So I'm, I'm always bound to be using them for something. And JAD in general is just very AFK, very laid back, uh, nothing compared to the Inferno, which I asked you guys what you would rather see in celebration of 200,000 subscribers on YouTube, and uh, 10,000 of you said Inferno Cape, about 2,000 of you said Loot from 200,000 video, so I guess Inferno Cape's gonna happen. Oh, that's gonna suck. Anyway, we did go ahead and finish up those five Jads. I used all the tokel on an Obsidian Staff, and uh, with whatever I had left over, I bought some rings, made about 500k from that. I probably lost money, actually, from all the crystal charges and supplies, but 500k, nevertheless, it'll help us with uh, the price check. So, we move on to the last boss of the video, this being the Giant Mole. I didn't kill every cave boss in the game, uh, specifically the Slayer monsters were already out because I wasted all of my 3,000 hard-earned points on the basilisk night video god i never want to mispronounce that word again so you know I, it wasn't every cave boss but it was most of them and yeah i did get my giant mole kc up to 1600 i was a just crazy amount of money made in like a time span of an hour at the giant mole if you're ever looking for some gp feel free to kill the mole it is incredible profit an hour but overall that is the end of the video the overall loot made from pvming turns out to be 33.8 mil the overall loot from anti IPKing turns out to be 45.3 mil. So overall profit made 79.1 million from this video. Just scrolling down on the Rune Light Loot Tracker, for those of you who are interested in seeing the actual profit made, uh, we made about 12 mil from the Dagoneth Kings, about 4 mil from Zolcano, about 500k from the 20 Obor kills, and I just left the, you know, 1000 Hill Giant KC in there as well. 45 5.3 mil from all of the loot chests. That 30 mil PK helped us out uh, uh, quite a bit, I'd say, for this price check, almost accounting for half of the whole thing. A nice little 400k from Scotizo and 300k from Bryophyta, as well as another 1.5 mil from Zolra, 6 mil from 100 Spindle, 3 mil from 96 Arteo, and lastly, 4.5 mil from 92 Calvarion. Not to mention that I received two chances champion scrolls in a time span of 10 minutes so yeah it was crazy well now we have five hard clue caskets and four elite clue caskets to open up so we're going to go ahead and do that now and to my surprise on my 1100th hard clue i did receive a new collection log so that was pretty cool i was watching one of my older loot videos uh the other day i think it was brutal red dragons and i was only at 70 hard kc of the clue scrolls so to see that over a thousand now is just crazy all these clues really adding up over the years no third age yet though but yeah i didn't receive uh too much from the hard clues i think it was like 500k or so um but to my surprise from the elites on the second one i did receive a mimic so i went ahead and did that real quick and it did give me an additional 500 blood runes but that was about it for that 250k from that elite and then following that we're just going to finish up opening up all of these elites we didn't get a single collection log slot from the elites but that's okay uh 530k from the hards 517k from the elites so overall 80 mil profit from this video Video. It was a lot of fun and uh, I'm looking forward to the next episode and I hope you guys enjoyed it. A huge thank you to the YouTube channel members for your constant support. I really do appreciate it with a special shout out to Angel's Blood and Matthew Stivers. Thank you guys for everything and sorry this one took so long to get out there but I have a lot of videos coming out uh, for this week and this weekend so stay tuned for that and until next time thank you all. Mr. No Sleep out.